Uh, the question standing under my name I ask of the Minister for Education, Heritage and Arts. Can the Minister inform the House why has an independent investigation in the financial and governance issues as highlighted in one of the recent petitions to the USP Council not been instituted? Thank you. Thank you. Honourable Minister for Education, Heritage and Arts. Mr. Speaker, I'm taken aback by noting that Honourable Leader of Opposition has decided to raise this question in Parliament without raising it with me as the Minister responsible for Education, who sits in Council, USP Council, along with four other Fiji government reps there. Mr. Speaker, Fiji has played a very prominent and distinctive role in the establishment of USP since 1968. Fiji has been the largest contributor to USP. USP's operating budget amongst the 12 member countries, and Fiji contributes 79 percent of the total member country contribution. Madam Speaker, despite having our own fully fledged university, national university, Fiji has never shrunk away from its commitment to the growth and development of its neighboring countries, and, to the, to the, and, and has been continuously contributing increasing amounts of financial resources to sustain USP. Madam Speaker, Fiji is seen as a true leader in the Pacific, caring about the well-being of Pacific Island countries. Madam Speaker, raising into Fiji's parliament a USP matter without raising it with the USP Council is an attempt to tarnish the preparation of Fiji in the region. And that too, that too, from a former Minister of Education, this speaks volumes about leadership and wisdom on the opposition bench. Madam Speaker, Never before, never, never before, Honourable, never before has Honourable any other Minister. Pacific Island country, never before has any other Pacific Island country raised a USP matter in their parliament. Honourable My apologies Minister, to our member countries. Please do not attack a member yep. directly. Ask Madam the Speaker, question, Madam Speaker, honourable members will know that USP has its own processes for dealing with complaints and petitions. These processes are derived from its charter and statutes and the council is its highest governance body. It is important that the USP as a regional university with its own governance structure be allowed to operate according to its procedures and policies. These policies and procedures are found in the ordinance. And let me read, Madam Speaker. Ordinance, page two, it says, complaints from individuals who provide their names should be sent to the secretary to the council who will take the matter to the pro-chancellor or the deputy chair of council as appropriate. The pro-chancellor and deputy chair of the secretary to council will vet the complaints for seriousness. If a complaint is deemed not serious, the secretary to council will inform the complainant that the matter is at the end. The, if the complaint should be referred within 21 days of receipt to the subcommittee of the executive committee of council prescribed in the ordinance for the discipline of the vice chancellor. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I haven't finished yet. Point of order, Madam Speaker. Point of order. Can he just keep his uh, speech? short and simple and answer the question because it must be relevant under six, uh, standing orders uh, 60. We don't need a long tirade on uh, the explanation. Just short and sweet. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Honourable Minister. The recent petition raising financial and governance issues had raised these issues was raised earlier on. These had been fully dealt with by the Executive Committee of the Council and the full Council. The Executive Committee and the Council had found the allegations without merit and dismissed them. The Executive Committee and the Council felt, felt that the facts on the ground had been opposite to what was being alleged. Specifically, the Executive Committee had dealt with this at its meeting on 27th September 2011, and the Council had considered the Executive Committee report and had its own decision at its 73rd meeting on 3rd to 4th November 2011. The most recent complaint, which was anonymous, was reported by the Acting Pro-Chancellor to the Council at its 80th Council meeting 2nd to 3rd June 2015 in Kiribati, where I was present. The Council noted that, that the issues raised in the complaint were already dealt with before. Number two, that according to its policy on handling complaints against officers of the university, complaints from anonymous sources will not be considered. The Council also noted the suggestion that this be made public. Madam Speaker, USP has two external audits, when most organizations have one. Furthermore, USP engages an external firm to conduct a large number of internal audits annually. 
an independent audit committee with no USP management or staff rep in it deliberates on all such reports and then provides report to the council. The chair of audit and risk committee, Mr. Ioane Neveli, a noted and respected financial expert, is satisfied with the financial controls at the university. Madam Speaker, I rest my case. Thank you. Supplementary question, Speaker. Honorable Leader of Opposition. As the Honorable Minister has uh, stated, that the petitions uh, go back to 2011, and we are now in 2015, and the member countries, uh, some of them have been very concerned about these petitions uh, not being addressed because they are also owners of the university. Uh, although the USP main campus is uh, in Fiji, on Lodala campus, USP is owned by 12 member countries. So some of these members have been concerned about what is happening to the petitions because in terms of uh, what the USP used to enjoy an international reputation, Madam Speaker, with accreditation to other overseas notable institutions. And how, how is the, these issues that have not been addressed going to affect its international reputation, particularly since we heard yesterday that they've lowered also the entry level into USP, so the international reputation, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Again, load of allegations. As I said, the most recent complaint, which is anonymous, was reported by the acting pro chancellor of the council at his 80th council meeting in Kiribati. Madam Speaker, honourable member is saying that member countries are not happy. All member country education ministers were present at the council meeting. All of them were present. All of, all of them accepted. There is no case to answer. Thank you. Thank you. The honourable Parminder Singh. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, can I ask the question to the Honorable Minister for Education and Regional Arts if there has been any external reports which supports good leadership, good governance, and financial stability of ESP? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Madam Speaker, uh, let me note a few. I've got a load of it. I don't want to uh, waste too, too many time of uh, uh, this House. Pacific Plan Review 2013, Report to Pacific Leaders, Volume 1, and account. The review noted and uploads how the University of the South Pacific has developed such an approach to developing the capabilities and accountabilities of its own governing body and would encourage Pacific Island Forum Secretariat and others to do a likewise. Recommendation number 21 in that report says PIFs should invest in upskilling and professionalizing the capabilities, accountabilities, and responsiveness of the new board. As noted earlier, the University of the South Pacific has introduced exemplary reforms in this regard. Number two, Madam Speaker, for the information of the other side. The USA report, a US delegation visited USP on 26 Feb 2014. And report states, USA Deputy Secretary Dennis Matthew yesterday paid a courtesy visit to the University of the South Pacific Vice Chancellor and President Professor Chandra at the Lodala campus. Matthew said, USP is a very unique type of organization one of the two regional universities in the entire world. And I quote, I would like to commend you for your leadership here at USP and in ensuring that this continues to be a premier organization in the region. We do, know, we do have a great deal of cooperation with universities such as people to people exchange and cultural activity, she said, and quote. I quote, we are putting together great emphasis on renewal, renewing our commitment to the Asia Pacific region. We are pleased that we are able to partner with the university. Thank you for your support and collaboration with us, unquote, Mrs. Matthew. Thank you, Naka. Thank you. Honorable Prem Singh. <laughs> Madam Speaker, the Minister's response has been on internal inquiry, people who are part of the process. My question to the Minister is, does he have the powers to institute an independent inquiry into the affairs of the ESP? Thank you, Honorable Minister. I think that's the question. Speaker, the power rests with the council. The report comes from the council. The executive committee examines the complaint, comes to the council. The executive committee, which I'm part of, a member of it, recommends to the council to establish an independent committee should there need be. Madam Speaker, in light of the volumes of reports, which says the university is an excellent leadership governance model for the entire region, there's no need. The council said there's no need to entertain such report. Thank you. Thank you. I give the um, floor to the honorable uh, Madam Speaker, can the, can, can, can the uh, Honourable Minister therefore 
confirmed to us that currently there's no petition pending calling for the, uh, for the uh, investigation into the financial governance and issues for USP. Thank you, Honourable Minister. After examining the report of the Council, the University Council members are not aware of any other petition apart from the one that was dealt by at the Kiribati meeting. No, none. None. If there's anything new, Madam Speaker, I know we have to look at it. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. I give, the, I give the floor to the Honourable Leader of Opposition. The Honourable Minister then explain. Okay. Is he aware of the withdrawal of about $40 million of Australian aid to set up the Pacific Island Centre for Public Administration due, due in their words, to poor man management? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Honourable Minister. <laughs> Madam Speaker, that's not uh, linked to this question, the original question? No. No. Madam Speaker, she can, she can table the question. Thank you. We will move on to the uh, next item on the uh, order paper. Secretary General. Written questions. I invite the Honorable Moses Imbulitabu to ask his written question. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I ask written question 158 of 2015 as list listed on today's order paper. Attorney General and Minister for Finance, Public Enterprises, Public Service and Communications. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I thank the Honourable Member uh, for his uh, written question. I will table my answer at a later sitting date. This period of understanding orders 45.3. Uh, just to note that we don't give tariffs uh, individually, we give it to various sectors, which is how the question will be answered. Thank you. 